So I just made a video that was like 20 minutes long, and you get to talk and you don't even realize how time passes. So anyway, I'm going to try to keep this video less than 10 minutes. Hopefully that's the case. Hope you guys are doing well. Miss you guys. And uh, sorry for the situation, but it is what it is. And uh, But I promise you this, there are great things to be learned from doing uh, online education. So doing this uh, watching a video and then interacting with me is, is really an important skill for you guys to learn because when you get to college someday, many of your classes may actually be online. So, and they're even talking, if this coronavirus continues, okay, I need to get to the lesson, but just real quick, the, the, you guys may be doing some online school next year. We don't know yet. So anyway, let's go to the lesson. Today we're learning about lost signs. And uh, I got the book here. I'm going to give you guys two brief examples. Let me write it quickly, all right? So Law of Signs is a topic that we're learning. What does it do? It allows us to solve for the side lengths and the angles on any triangle, not just right triangles. You guys have learned that the sine of theta works. Sine, cosine, and tangent refer to right triangles. So if I have a 90-degree angle, the sine of angle theta, let's, let's say this is theta, this is A, this is B, this is C, but the sine of theta is equal to the opposite A divided by C, and this relationship works in right triangles. But we can actually use the law of sines to apply the properties of sine and cosine and tangent uh, to triangles that are not right triangles. So how does this work? Well, let me give you a picture. I'll give you a triangle, uh, and we're going to call this A, this B, and this C. We're going to use capital letters to represent the angles. And we're going to use lowercase letters to represent the side lengths. Uh, we're going to call this A, B, and C. And I want you to notice in, in your problems in the book, the convention will be this, that B goes with B, A goes with A, and C goes with C. Let me draw a line to an opposite relationship. Starting at the vertex of capital letter A, if we go straight out and find the opposite side, we name that lowercase a. If we start at angle C and start at its vertex, capital C represents the angle. We go straight out, run into the side, that's lowercase c, which represents the side length. Same thing with B, start at the vertex, go out to its opposite side, we run into side length B. And again, capital letters represent the angles and lowercase letters represent the side length. So, what does the law of sine say? The law of sine says that the sine of angle A divided by side length A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by side length B is equal to the sine of angle C divided by side length C. And this is what we go with. Now, for instance, just real quick, this is arbitrary. It could be named anything you want. You could call this car. Uh, you could call this tool, and you could call this house, and you could call this X, Y, and Z. And if that were the case, then if I wrote the sine of angle car divided by its opposite side, where's the opposite side of car? If this is angle car is Y, okay, side of car divided by Y is equal to the sine of uh, house, angle house divided by its opposite, which is x, is equal to, I'm running out of room, uh, the sine of tool uh, divided, angle, angle tool divided by its opposite side z. Okay, anyway, what I'm saying is, what is a lot, what is a lot of side of saying? It's saying that the sine of an angle divided by its opposite side is equal to the sine of uh, another angle divided by its opposite side, which is equal to the sine of uh, let's call this the first angle, the second angle, and the third angle, the sine of the third angle divided by its opposite side in any triangle. Now, so let's set up a problem. Let's see how this works. Try to keep it simple to the point. A thought occurred to me that I didn't do in the last video, so I guess I practiced uh, of a way to make this a little easier to understand how to set it up. So I'm going to draw this triangle in the book. Basically, I'm solving. If you guys have your textbooks, I know some of you don't, but if you're looking at page uh, 561, I'm solving example one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send you guys a copy. I'm going to send you guys a picture of the page that I solved these examples off of so you can study it. And I'm going to send you a picture of the page uh, that you have to do um, uh, the problems off of, the practice problems. Okay, now, so in the book, <coughs> in this triangle, the information, ooh, 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 backwards, backwards, backwards. Let's go with this. So in the book, the, the book gives you angle C, and this is how you're going to be presented. Angle C is 102 degrees. Uh, angle B is equal to 29 degrees. And angle C is equal to, no, not angle C. 
silent C, lowercase c. Remember that the lowercase letters, what am I doing? I'm reading the wrong problem. C is 102, B is 29, and side length B is equal to 28 feet. And we're supposed to solve for the other side lengths on the triangle. Let me set this book down real quick. All right, so what do you have to do? You have to draw a triangle. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Just draw a triangle. Again, these are not even necessary. This law of sides applies to right triangles as well, but uh, you don't worry. This it applies to all triangles. So just draw a, just a draw a triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. And we have to call the angles by letters. So again, we're going to call the angles A, B, and C. Does not matter which way you label these. What matters is where you put the numbers. Um, notice that um, angle C is 102. Quickly, quickly, 102 degrees, and B is 29 degrees, uh, and we don't know angle A, okay? Uh, we know that side length B is 28, so this is where you have to use this assumption. For your homework problems, you are going to assume this relationship uh, for all your homework problems. Again, I could have called these sides anything I wanted. I could have called this X, Y, and Z. But to make it clear, we uh, because we are used to using X in algebra, it's just, um, as humans, we like to see the same thing. And you change a variable, and then it becomes confusing. So we use X, we always use X. For this law of sines, we generally use A, B, and C, capital for the angles. And the assumption for your homework is that if you see this side length B, which is lowercase, it's going to be the side that's opposite angle B. So what are we saying here? Opposite the angle A will be the side length lowercase a. Opposite angle C will be the side length lowercase c. And opposite angle B will be the side length lowercase b. So when you read this problem in your homework, uh, you can assume that this is the side opposite of angle B. Okay? Now, so opposite of angle B is going to be side length B. And opposite angle C is going to be side length C. And opposite angle A is going to be side length A. And let's fill in what we know. So we know that... We know that B is, sound like B is 28 feet. Okay? And let's set up the law of sines. So the law of sines says the sine of A divided by uh, sine length A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by sine length B, which is equal to the sine of C divided by sine length C. Okay? And let's just put the information in. Okay? So what we have here? Well, uh, we know... Oh, by the way, let's just sort this up. And this is going to be true for most of your homework, other than the ambiguous cases, which I'm not going over today. But the problems that I assign you, this will be the case. Do we know two angles in the triangle? Yes, we do. Then we can find the third angle, because remember that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if I do 102 degrees plus 29 degrees, I get 131 degrees, which makes this angle 49 degrees. Again, if I do 102 plus 49, I get 151 plus 29 is 180. So let's go ahead and do that first. <clears throat> For your homework problems, I'll just give you this helpful hint. You're going to know two angles, and you can use the two angles to find the third angle. Okay, That's going to make the problem a lot easier and less confusing. So take the two angles that you know, subtract them from 180. I added those. You guys know how to do that. Okay, so let's fill in the information. The sine of angle A, what is A? A is 49 degrees divided by uh, the opposite side of A. Do we know A? No, we don't. So we're just going to put A is equal to the sine of angle B. Ah, we know B is what? Oops. Sine of what? 29 degrees divided by its opposite side, B. Now, do we know B? Yes, we do. It's 28, which is equal to... Let me take the degree symbols off when doing these... The, the actual equations to make it less confusing. Sine of C, do we know C? Yes, we do. It's going to be the sine of 102 degrees divided by its opposite side, C, which we don't know. Now, so when you go to do this, you're only going to use two at a time. You have, obviously, this equation uh, is a relationship between three things. But to make this simple, well, let me just say, to solve an equation, you can, you can only solve an equation, one equation, if there is exactly one unknown. If there's more than one unknown, you can't solve the equation. You would have to have more than one equation to do that. For instance, you can set any of these two equal. We've already written them as equal. If I wrote, well, let me show you what to do, and then I'll show you what not to do. Do you notice right here 
if I ask you which of these three do you know both the angle and the side, you would say the middle one. That's correct, and that's the one that you want to use. You want to use the, the one, the, the relationship in the homework problems in which you know both the angle and the side to solve uh, the problem. So we're going to have to use the sine of 29 divided by 28 is equal to, and I'm just going to set it equal to the first one, we want to just do two at a time, is going to equal the sine of what? 49 degrees, I believe the camera can see over here, sine of 49 degrees divided by A. Let me just check the camera, make sure you guys can see the right side of the board. Yes, all right. Okay, now to solve this, we're going to cross multiply, okay? What is cross multiplication? I'll deal with this later. It's just when there is equality between two fractions, you can cross multiply. The relationship is true. For instance, if you have one half is equal to four eighths, we all agree that this is true. Cross multiplication also results in a true statement. One times eight is the same as two times four because eight is equal to eight. So what we can do here is we can do sine of 29 times A. When we do sine of 29 times A, we're going to put the A first just because it's easier to read. A times the sine of what? 29 is equal to the sine of 49 times 28. But instead of writing the sine of 49 times 28, which is confusing to look at, uh, we can use commutativity and multiplication to write this the other way. We can write this as 28 times the sine of 49. Okay? Now, how do we solve the equation? Well, we want to solve for a. Sine of 29 is a number that you know, so we're going to divide by the sine of 29. Divide by the sine of 29. And we end up with a is equal to 28 times the sine of 49 divided by the sine of 29. Okay? And that's it. Now, you say, well, what is this division by sine of 29? Well, just remember that sine of 29 is a number. It's a number that's very close to one half. For instance, you're really looking at, let me erase this, you're really looking at a times the sine of 29 is equal to 28 times the sine of 49 is similar to, sine of 30 is one half, so the sine of 29 is slightly less, so it'd be a times the about 0 0.48 or something uh, is equal to 28 times the sine of 49, okay, the sine of 60 is about 0 0.87, 0 0.5, so what are we, about 13 more, let's say 0 0.64, I'm just throwing the number, but, uh, or maybe 6 through, yeah, about right, okay. And then what would we do? Well, you understand that if I have 3x equals 15, I can divide by 3 and divide by 3. And if I have x times 3 is equal to 15, notice the similarity x times 3 is equal to 15, I can divide by 3 and divide by 3. So I can do what? Divide by 0 0.48, divide by 0 0.48, and I'm ending up with a is equal to 28 times 0 0.64 over 0 0.48, which is the same thing we did down here, where just the sine of 49 represents the, the, the exact value. Remember that 0 0.64 would be approximate, and the sine of 29 would be the exact value represents the zero point four eight. Okay, now, once you have this, you have now found side length A. If you want to know its approximated value, you type this directly into a calculator. You do 28 times the sine of 49, uh, which gives you a decimal number, divided by the sine of 29, and you guys get an answer. Um, and what does this represent? So A is what? Let's fill this in. Well, A is here. We know that A is equal to... 28 times the sine of 49 over the sine of 29, okay? Now, uh, now we're going to solve for C, okay? So notice we found, we found the unknown angles. We have all three angles. We have two of the side lengths. Now we can find C. To do this, go back to your original equation and use the, the one that has uh, the two known values and the one that has C in it. For instance, if you use, let's just show you what's wrong with trying to solve. Let's try, let's say you try to set this equal to this. You're going to have two unknowns. It's not going to work. Sine of 49, I don't want to spend too much time here, divided by A is equal to the sine of 102 divided by C. You're going to have a problem because what you're going to have is you're going to have two unknowns. And if you try to solve this equation, you end up with C times the sine of 49 is equal to A times the sine of 102. 
and you have an issue because are you, you have two things to solve for and you can't isolate both of them. So again, to solve an equation, you can only have one unknown at a time. And in order to do this with the law of sides, use part of the, when you're setting up your equation to solve for your unknown variable, make sure that one side of the equation has both the angle and the side length represented. So you're going to still use the sine of 29 divided by 28 is equal to, now we're going to set it equal to the right side, sine of what, 102 divided by C. Cross multiply, we have C times the sine of 29. You guys can always erase, I don't want to repeat myself because you guys can just erase and look at something again if you didn't catch it the first time. It's going to be 28 times the sine of 102. And we're going to divide by what? Divide by the number, which is the sine of 29. And we now have C is equal to 28 times the sine of 102 divided by sine of 29. And there is the value that represents the sine of C in its exact form. You guys can leave your answers in their exact form. So C is 28 sine of 102 divided by sine of 29. Okay, that's it. So you found all three angles and you found all three sides. Now this side's easy to read, it's 28. Uh, now if you want to check your answers, 28 will be your smallest value. Uh, I don't have a calculator in front of me, but this is one half. Multiply by two is 56 times 0.6. I'm just guesstimating, but six times five is 30. Six times six is 36. So 33.6. I'm just, I'm just throwing. We're, I'm ballparking it. But, uh, and then 102 sine of 29 is one half. So we got 56 times 102 would be, oh God. So I don't want to, too. what's that going to be? It's going to be past 90. Um, oh, Lord. Uh, I need to look at the table. It's out of 80. I guess we're going to be as high as 0.8. So I'm, I'm just going to say point, no, 0.9-ish. Point so let's say 0.9 times 56 would be 9 times 5, 45 times 654, 49. Let's just say 49. Let's just say 50. 50-ish. Okay. All right. Now, so notice, do you see that your largest angle is opposite your largest side? You see that your smallest angle is opposite your smallest side. 28 is the smallest of the three. And your middle angle, which is 49, is opposite your middle side. So when you check, you can punch these into a calculator to get a better approximation. And you can find that these numbers are... Um, the smallest number is going to correspond with the smallest side. And again, this could be off. I don't, I'm not sure what the sign of 102 is. I know this is fairly close, but anyway, you get the idea of it. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, let's see. Lee. All right, I look forward to getting a chance to interact with you guys with questions. So make sure uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm going to be available for you guys to interact with me live and ask questions on the homework. Um, but let's give this one. So, uh, hold on. I did angle side angle. Angle angle side. So let's say A. Let's say B is equal to 45 degrees. Uh, C is equal to 105 degrees. And I'm actually not doing example two, I'm doing number five in the book. Number five on page 566. And B is equal to 20. This is very similar to the last one. Let's do a different one. I didn't read the book correctly. Let's do A. Let's do number, uh, number seven. So A is equal to 35 degrees, uh, B is equal to 40 degrees, and C is equal to 10. Okay? Alright. Um, so we set up our triangle. Again, the assumption is that the lowercase letters are opposite their capital case uh, angles. Um, and the lowercase letters represent side lengths. So we're going to call just, let's call this A. This B and the C looks different than the book, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna draw it this way so that you see it doesn't matter how you draw the triangle. Angle A is 35 degrees, angle B is 40 degrees, and side length C is 10. So where are they? 
opposite of A is side length A, opposite of B is side length B, and opposite of C is side length C. We know that side length C is 10. And let's go. Let's set up our law of sine. So we know that the sine of A divided by A is equal to the sine of B divided by B is equal to the sine of C divided by C, capital C. And let's fill in the information. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We know two angles. So if we know two angles, we can find the third angle by subtracting from 180. 35 plus 40 is 75. Off of 180 is going to give us an angle of what? 105 degrees. That's the first step you need to do is make sure that you find all three angles. So now we're going to say what? The sine of 35. Why? Because 30, I'm going to take the degree symbol off in the equation. 35 is the measure for A divided by the side length A, which we don't know, is equal to the sine of angle B. And what is B? 40 degrees. So sine of 40 divided by the side length B, which is equal to the sine of 105 divided by side length C, which is 10. Now, again, if you look at this, which of these pieces of the equation has both uh, the angle and the side length known in its relationship, that would be this one here. So we're going to use this one to solve the other two. We're going to set up the equation, take this off the board, and let's solve the other two. So first I'm going to relate these two, okay? So we're going to say that the sine of 40 divided by B is equal to the sine of 105 divided by 10, and we're going to cross multiply we end up with 10 times the sine of 40 is equal to B times the sine of 105. Notice I've done this on purpose to show you now that what happens when the variable's on the other side of the equation, you're still treating this as two sides of the equation. You're interested in the side that has the B. You want to get rid of the sine of 105, so you're going to divide by the sine of 105, divide it over here. And what do we end up with? We end up with B is equal to 10 times the sine of 40 divided by the sine of 105. Okay? So we know side length B is 10, side of 40, divided by the sine of 105. And now we can solve for, okay, so we found this now. Uh, we found B, so we're done with this. Now we need to find A, so we're still going to use this one that we know, sine of 105 divided by 10. Sine of 105 divided by 10 is equal to... Uh, sine of 35 divided by A, and we're going to cross multiply, okay, A times the sine of 105 is equal to 10 times the sine of 35, and we can divide by what? Divide by sine of 105, divide by the sine of 105, and we end up with A is equal to 10 sine of what? 35 divided by the sine of 105, and I hope that this gets you started with the law of sines. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a, uh, a wonderful afternoon.